All right, so now I am very excited because by this video, I covered everything that I want to cover in this course. But I will keep this course up to date and I will add some other features to it. And recently, because many students asked me to add the payment gateway to it, so I will try to add it in the next videos. So now we need to fetch the products and display it in here. So there is many ways actually to do it. For example, if we go to the feed screen in here, we could add a stream builder, for example, or a future builder, which is has the Firestore collection as a method for it, because it does return a future or a stream, depending on which one you want to use. But actually, this way, is bad in our case. It's bad because if we use this way, the products will only be displayed in here. It will not be displayed neither in the popular products, neither for the brands, neither for the categories, for example. So all the state management will be gone for nothing if we use this way. So we need to find another way so that it matches all our state management and we need to write only one code that match all of our other codes. So what I mean is we need to initialize or write a code that can display the products in here and display the products depending on the categories in here, depending on the brands in here and the popular products in here. So for that, let's go to the products provider. So in here, actually, we can now delete all of this. I will actually comment it for you. So I will cut it and paste it in here. And for sure I got an error is because we don't now have the products list. So for that I will initialize an empty list in here and we need to initialize it like this and actually we need to paste it in here like this now in this class we need to implement that method that I told you about so in here we can initialize a future for sure it's a future and Void. I will name it in here fetch products like this. Now, in this method, we need to await and read the Firestore. So, we need to write all the items or all the products in this products collection. So, for that, let's go back to the code and in here, let's say Firebase. I, I will actually add a sync keyword first in here. So in here, let's say Firebase Firestore.instance.collection, which is the products collection, and it must match the product's name in here. So product. Then we say dot get, just like this. And now we can call then method to it. Now, in this then method, we need to do something. Now, in this function, we have all of these products. So we have this product and this product in it. And if we add a new product, it will be added to it. So instead of null in here, we need to do something, as I said. I will change it like this. And now, we need to give it, instead of this value, something called a query snapshot. Because all of these data are a query snapshot by writing it this way. So in here, let's say query snapshot. And I will name it product snapshot. And now we need to use this product snapshot to fetch our data or to add our data to this list. So in here, we should call the docs for it and call for each, add a semicolon in here, 
and now for each element in this file store or in this products collection in the file store it must be added to the products list so in here let's say for example products dot insert insert the product add index zero and as the element for sure it's going to be a product like this all right so now we need to add the attributes for this product for that i will just copy it from here and paste it up there and edit it so in here paste it and we need to edit each attribute of this so now we need to use this product snapshot to fetch our products so we can use this product snapshot by calling its elements and this elements contain what we want so in here on this element we can call the data or get field so we can call the data like this and access it in here so in here we need to give it the product id so in here i got an error because in the latest uh, firebase firestore version they removed it so we need to use another way but for previous versions of this firestore it will work that's why i showed you so in here we need to call get and we need to add the field name in here for, for example if we want the products image we need to add the products image in this field but for now we need the products id so in here let's say product id like this and the product id will be just like this one so they will be matched because it read it from here so as a title we need to access now uh, i will actually copy this and paste it in here paste it for the description paste it in here for the fonts in here for the brands in here now we need to match all of it so i will just match them so in here the title so i will copy it in here and paste it in here for the products description here it is press cancel and press on it and paste it in here for the image url i name it product image so like this for the products brand it is in here so access it like this and last one will be the product category name now for the quantity and for the price i will keep it like this for the moment and tell you why later so we still need to access the product category name so here it is here it is now i will start the app and see what will happen so i got no products let's make sure yeah i got no products for sure i got no products because we didn't call this method yet so i will call this method and defeat the screen so first of all we need to initialize the provider which is we initialized it before so in here below of this line i will call the products provider dot fetch products like this i will start the application now and see what will happen i still got no no products i will go to another screen and come back all right so here it is and everything is being displayed but as you can see i need to go twice to defeat the screen to be displayed so for example first time is null is empty actually if i go to another screen and come back it will be displayed so we we don't need actually to call this method in here we need to fetch it in another class before that we come to this feed screen for example we can add a splash screen for this screen then once it's become available it takes us to this feed screen but simply i will just initialize it in the home screen because it's our main page so i can initialize it in here now let's give it a try and see what will happen so here it is it's being initialized let's go to the feeds now and here it is now we need to change this 
price and this quantity so everything is working fine now let's make sure that it's being popular it's not popular let's go to the product it's because I said in here is popular to false let's set it to true and save it actually here it is it's being displayed in here let's make sure of the brand all right so I got it multiple times let's go to the feed screen so yeah I got it multiple times so we need to do something for this method now simply we can do something in here which is empty this list before that we add or insert any item to it so in here for example or in here and this then method above the for loop do it like this I will restart it now and see what will happen go multiple times to the home screen to fetch it many times so here it is it's working fine all right so let's make sure of the fonts so here we got one font let's make sure of other item we got no clothes let's make sure of the I added one watch so here it is and everything is working fine it's being added to the wish list also it's we can delete it we can do anything that we want now what left to do is to change the quantity and to change this price actually in here the price is double so if I access it in here for sure I will get an error uh, let me make sure of the name of it so yeah it's price in here I will start the application and see what will happen yeah so I got an error in here let's yeah and the list is empty we got no products for sure so we need to do a parsing in here so I will cut this and say double dot parse and paste our code in here let's restart our app and give it a try we got no error let's make sure so here's the price is being displayed now let's make sure of the quantity what is the title type of it it's an end in here so we need to do an uh, end parsing in here so I will copy this paste it in here and here say end dot parse and for sure we need to parse now the product quantity so for the product quantity here it is so we need to access it now so I will start the application now let's make sure that we got no error so no error occurred go to the fit screen here's the quantity is different and everything is working fine now before that I finish everything I will just add some styling for it I will just change the height of this grid view so let's go actually for the feeds and the widget so and the widget file so in here and the feeds product we can change the height of this for example uh, I will just delete the constraints and just give it height like this just like this now let's give it a try it looks way more better now if I add more products it will be great so I will add this watch let's say watch in here and in here let's say 199 and in here let's say phones uh, not phones actually watches in here let's say something and description let's say description for a watch and as a quantity add any number okay so now let's upload it and see what will happen
okay so it is done let's make sure that it's being added to the file store so yeah it's being added but yeah here it is what to do so let's make sure that it's being displayed all right so here it is and it looks and it looks way more better than before so actually that's it for this course as i said in the beginning of this tutorial i will keep updating this course and answer all of your questions and i will add new things to this course as you wish so stay tuned and see you soon